All right, let's do this. It's a Lux Algo uh, review. All right, now I was, I was sort of um, introduced to this from their YouTube channel. By the way, I paid for this with my own money, $110 for three months with a 20 per, uh, 20% off coupon that was on their sign or something. Anyway, so I was interested in this because of the YouTube video. They have it running all the time. It shows basically buy sell signals on uh, Bitcoin. So I was just kind of curious about it, so I bought it just to check it out. This is my opinion of it, uh, from purchasing it, and uh, it's pretty cool. It does have a lot of stuff. Like, this is too much. This is everything enabled, and it's way too much um, for me personally, if you're sort of looking at this, right? So let's sort of break this down a little bit here, take it into pieces, and compare it to what is already free on uh, TradingView. I also want to compare it to chart prime which is another thing that i bought to try out and uh, see which one kind of wins the the great battle in the sky here but overall if you're just looking at it here's what you've got uh, you got the uh, support resistance zones which are up here and you have those as well with a uh, sort of a band and this band is also in chart prime it basically will tell you overbought oversold if you're kind of getting into it you know you kind of get a bounce off a little bit uh, Lux Algo does have a little bit of volume profile, which is nice. We have a stop loss levels. Uh, and then you also have this sort of, uh, it looks like just a vomit, a vomit of uh, where we're sort of going here. It also has as well these colored candles, which I think is one of the main features here. I think it's really nice colored candles. So if you see green, we're kind of really serious about going up. And then it sort of tapers off up here. We're just sort of uh, not that interested in going any direction. You do kind of see here. It's not always that accurate, uh, in my opinion, because you do have kind of, uh, you know, clearly you're just going sideways, uh, but you do have a red indicating it was sort of serious with it. I'm assuming it's based upon volume. But now we're going back through here. So if you're looking at the buy-sell signals, they are kind of redundant with the uh, colored candles, in my opinion. Uh, the support resistance, I think, are just fantastic. That's probably the main thing that I like about this. You do have a lot of trend indicators that will sort of follow along and let you know the trend. You do have automatic uh, trend lines, which I think is excellent. Comes with a couple of clouds that you can enable as well. Also comes with an oscillator. So you look at three main products here. The Lux Algo Premium, 5.2 by the way. Lux Algo uh, Patterns and the Lux Algo uh, oscillator, which includes a, many kinds of oscillators. You can get an advanced, which I have on the screen, a pivot, ultimate, RSI, MACD, stochastic. Uh, I don't know what the ultimate kind of means here. It looks kind of like just a standard MACD to me. And maybe it's just something magical about it. But I really think, as far as the oscillator goes, their main oscillator that's the most useful is the advanced which does include stuff like um, divergences, but it also draws the divergence before the divergence finishes, which is better than most of the other divergence indicators out there, in my opinion. So the divergence indicator is rock solid uh, on that. I really like that it draws it in advance. I mean, clearly you could just have an RSI up and just see it yourself, what have you, but uh, yeah. So let's look at the features one by one and see if it's better than the free alternative. The first comparison is going to be half trend versus super trend versus extreme trend. Extreme trend, by the way, it says X, but it's called extreme trend. Uh, go here and search for extreme trend. Very, very nice add on. Um, but yeah, and then you have Lux Algo Premium 5.2. Like, if you just have a buy indicator, you're just like, yeah, I just want a buy indicator, something simple. Uh, let's look at all of these trends and see who kind of wins the battle here. I really think Lux Algo does come in a little bit earlier here. You have half trend, which is the little notch. Super trend, which you all know and love. Uh, the line over here is extreme trend. So the, the thick line is extreme trend. So this is looking very, very good for uh, Lux Algo over here, right? The sell indicator is a lot earlier. We got one, two, three, four, five, five bars earlier than some of these other ones over here. 
Over here, we're one bar later than um, the extreme trend, uh, trend indicator. Uh, yeah, the, you know, the half trend, I think, is one of the stars of the show. Here's the half trend right here. Half trend just scores just a little bit here if you're interested in it. Uh, up here, we have a sell, but we get wicked out. Half trend just kind of relax. Extreme trend kind of relaxes, comes in a little bit later. I do like the buy indicator here, but it is uh, it is beginning here where we pick it up. Half trend is like, look, we got a little bit of a downtrend. We got a little bit of an uptrend. By the way, I did modify the Lux Algo to be 11 instead of 12. Let me turn it back to the default of 12. I do think 11 is better for something like futures, uh, in my opinion. But Lux Algo here uh, scores a bar before the others, before half trend. Um, as far as this goes, super trend is just sort of a lag behind. Like like super trend really doesn't really the super trend the Vu Manchu. I mean, it's just really not impressing me that much. But yeah, Lux Algo says buy here. Uh, we do buy here. Lux Algo says sell here, which no, uh, let's not. Uh, so yeah, you know, and the other, that's what I guess gets me about Lux Algo versus some of these others. And I, I probably could tweak this somehow in the settings and make it a little bit better, but uh, maybe have just a trend tracer. You know, I don't know. Um, but there, it, I didn't spend like a gazillion hours with this thing, but the time that I have spent with it, both with the 11 and the 12, I, I do think that it has these sell indicators out of nowhere where uh, clearly I don't want to sell. And uh, these other trend indicators are like, you know, we're not selling we're, we're still going up. I do see that as maybe an issue, uh, depends on your views, but yeah, the sell indicator here, I mean, I'm really not interested in selling, you know, that's why I think super trend comes in pretty well. Super trend is just sort of hangs in there as we go up It realizes, Hey, there's a pullback. How serious is the pullback before you need to sell half trend, extreme trend, super trend is like, yeah, well, you know, let's keep going. So you can make an argument of, Hey, why not just get super trend and use it the entire time? And uh, maybe you could do that. And maybe you could just see the trends coming. So here we go with a little bit more action and adventure here. Uh, Lux Algo coming in a little bit later than the others as far as sort of grabbing onto this. Uh, the same thing as we're coming up here. Uh, half trend, extreme trend gives us a little bit earlier signal. Um, and then down here as we're coming down, Lux Algo. Uh, let's see this big trend over here. Lux Algo's over here. One bar later, they all catch up. Uh, meanwhile, Super Trend is like, yeah, we need to we need to buy up here. Or Lux Algo says buy up here as well. Uh, gonna get wicked out, what have you. So, um, yeah, I mean, I really think if this one indicator being the flagship, there are better alternatives, in my opinion, that are free. Um, the two that I would like the best, uh, by far, is going to be Extreme Trend and Half Trend. Super Trend, again, this is not something that I would use a lot. Half Trend is the notch. Super Trend, uh, Extreme Trend is the, um, is the line, right? Extreme Trend is the line over there. Uh, so let's turn off half trend here. Just look at extreme trend. This is probably my favorite. If you don't mind a line being through your price action, if you really don't want that extreme trend does come with a notch as well. So you can just turn on the, uh, shapes and you can get a notch, uh, when it's time to go and when it's time to sell buy, what have you. So I think extreme trend is my favorite. When it comes to that, if you're looking for a real solid thing, extreme trend, half trend, both of these are pretty impressive and, uh, you know, really like them. Like combined, you're looking at a, just a golden suite of things here. Now, you know, obviously Lux Algo is one thing um, and with a lot of stuff in it. So it does save you space as far as that goes. But if you're just looking for the indicator, I think it does have alternatives that may be a little bit better. All right, Lux Algo does come with two different clouds. We have a Neo Cloud and what is the proper name of the other one? An EQ Cloud. I, I personally I did not find these useful. Uh, you may find these amazing and just miraculous. Uh, in the documentation, I believe it does say that you can use these for support. I think the EQ Cloud is just, just something I would never use. 
It's just something I would just never use. So again, you're going to rely upon trends. Uh, you can use that for trends, I guess, but if you're relying on trends or a much better uh, ways to do that, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, we have sort of a green or sort of trending into the red over here, what have you. Uh, just overall, I did not find the EQ cloud to be super useful. I think the other cloud is kind of cool. Uh, it does work for support and resistance. I mean, it does say, hey, we're supporting resistance. Um, and they do also say that, um, you know, you may want to use that as your primary indicator of, um, you know, sort of a secondary indicator of going uh, up or down, which I really didn't see that to be the case. I mean, right here, I clearly want to go up a little bit right here. But if I were to use this particular indicator, I mean, I would be like, eh, you know, maybe I don't want to go up. Like right here, I would want to go down. But if you use the indicator, but like, man, maybe I don't want to go down. Um, uh, you can use this for just overall trend if you're interested in that. And I do think it does kind of work for that. The support resistance is okay. Uh, it's not anything miraculous, but I do like how it does bounce against that. It does use that a little bit, so it is kind of nice uh, in that regard. I think there are much better things if you're looking for support resistance. There are significantly better things uh, out there, in my opinion, like uh, this particular one here has a um so this well this is quite a bit but there there are other things for support resistance out there these support resistance lines were kind of auto drawn you have a pivot points add-ins that you can use get over here and uh, search for pivots uh you have pivot points standard i think there's pivot points daily what have you uh there's also other great uh, things that will determine support resistance for you you can just manually draw it out yourself or you can have uh, one of the other uh, gazillion add-ins to get you levels of support and resistance if you're sort of looking for the cloud to do that. I do think a trend indicator is going to be your friend here uh, rather than rather than the support resistance cloud. But uh, overall, I just think that the EQ cloud was not something that I really liked. The, uh, the uh, standard cloud was much better in my opinion. So I mean, it does look good. It's nice. It's sort of an on-screen thing. It does pretty good guessing. You do have kind of a, a nice thing here. The other thing that you can get with this uh, add-on that I kind of like is the, uh, the reversal zone. So you'll see this in Chart Prime also has reversal zones, which I think is interesting. So you do have this, right? And a lot of people are going to yell, you know, it's like a, a couple of people I know were like, yo, it's Bollinger Bands. Uh, I mean, so I turned on Bollinger Bands here. I believe it is the default. Yeah, default 2.0. Uh, turn on Bollinger Bands here. You can see kind of the difference, right? So the Bollinger Bands is not exactly the same, in my opinion. Um, you do have the Bollinger Bands here. We're sort of dipping into here. The Bollinger Bands is like, yeah, we're releasing. So it is kind of similar, I guess. Uh, the Bollinger Bands do have a... You are up against the Bollinger Bands here. Meanwhile, the EQ Cloud sort of catch or the the uh, reversal zone is sort of catching up. I I just think that this is not something I would be interested in. I mean, if I really am looking at overbought versus oversold, I would end up using something else, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's okay. I mean, it does dip into here. Uh, it does wick out the uh, Bollinger Bands as per. <laughs> A lot of people do. A lot of people do say that they use Bollinger Bands as like a primary, a primary indicator of when to enter, when to leave. You know, oversold, overbought, whatever. Uh, anyway, oversold, overbought, oversold, oversold, overbought, oversold. It's easy for me to say, but yeah, um, yeah, just didn't find this that useful uh, to me. To me personally, I did not find the reversal zones that useful. Uh, trend catcher. You have two of them. We have a trend tracer, trend catcher, and. Uh, Trend Tracer, Trend Catcher, and Hyper Trend. All right, well, let's look at these real quick. So one is a sort of a dotted line that sort of goes along with us. I thought it was pretty cool. I do like the, uh, the sort of the Trend Tracer over here, uh, how it just sort of goes through. Now, it's kind of similar. You're going to say that's kind of similar as X Trend or Extreme Trend, and I agree with you. Uh, if you combine those two and see who's a clear winner... I really think Extreme Trend's a better one right here. Get a couple of entries faster on going uh, down here. Uh, going up, you get, again, you get a lot faster results as far as going up here with the uh, Extreme Trend versus all these other trends. 
But uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. You'd have the dotted line. I think it's going to be better than the solid line, in my opinion, with this. So uh, let's turn off. I think that is the trend tracer. Uh, okay, the trend tracer is the dotted line. Yeah, I think that's the better one, in my opinion, if you just look for an overall trend. I think it's pretty solid. It's sort of going up here a little bit, right? And then down here, we're sort of going down. So if, if I had to choose... I like the dotted line a little bit better. I just think it functions better, in my opinion, for overall trend, right? You have the green, you're going up, a little bit of a red, a little bit of a green, a little bit of a red. It is a little bit slower, obviously, than their main signal uh, and, their, and their candle coloring and what have you. But if you look for overall trend, I like the dotted line a little bit better. I found it less invasive than the solid line, in my opinion. I do like a sort of the, um, I do like this over here with this uh, hyper trend. I think the hyper trend was pretty cool. Uh, this is kind of just another, another yet another cloud. Really did like the hyper trend. I think this is pretty solid. I found a lot of times it would, uh, it would predict where price was gonna bounce up against. Um, so obviously that expanded due to the price, but I do think a lot of times it does predict where the price is going to be around. And you see the, sort of the, the center line here. Uh, can we use Donchian channels and do the same thing? Maybe. Uh, but, but I did think this is one of my uh, favorite features of the main thing was this hyper trend. I really like it. It does also come with a dashboard. I really didn't find the dashboard all that useful. Let's make it normal size. Uh, the dashboard would, okay, let's make it large size. The dashboard would say, uh, Sensitivity, trend strength, volatility, explosive, explosive, I don't know, whatever, a volume st uh, sentiment. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, it's, it's good. It's nice. It's, it's kind of cool, but uh, I really didn't use it that much. I ended up turning it off for the most part. So that is the uh, Lux Algo Premium. Uh, the, uh, what I really like about Lux Algo more than anything else is the alerts. So you can set. A custom alert thing you basically have like an alert function call that you can have which I thought was one of the, the main things I added alert for there now you're gonna go for Lux algo premium we're gonna say uh, any an alert function call so you can say a function call and you can say alert me when this that this that right so you can say uh, any alert function call conditions so I want to be alerted when we have this and this or what have you. And you can say uh, signal condition, filtered alert creator. <sighs> that is nice. I want any confirmation by, but I want the trend tracer to be up at the same time. Or I want the neo cloud to be bullish at the same time. Wow, this is this is just the main. This is the mainstay of uh, this add-on right here. I think it's just excellent. I think this was this was the thing that really turned me on about this. Is because uh, I mean, I think when you set alerts, a lot of times it just has it's too much, right? It's just alerting all the time on this and that. And I think that that particular function, that feature, is is excellent. Is excellent. The, uh, yeah, support resistance and patterns. This, my friends, this is amazing. This is amazing. And it's a lot. There's a lot going on here. But this is amazing. Let me tell you what the main features I love about it. I actually like this more than their their main add-in. Um, let's sort of look at this one by one. I think the order blocks was my main thing. The order blocks is absolutely incredible. Uh, just absolutely incredible. Let's turn off pattern detection. Let's turn off trend lines, which is incredible. Let's turn off projection. Let's look at order blocks. Order blocks is outstanding. Outstanding. You can see the order block it just shoots up, skyrockets when it hits, when the order blocks comes up. And you'll just see this use. Here's order blocks right here, right? You'll see that use order blocks kind of as support and resistance sometimes. So you just create an order block and you'll hover around that area, what have you. So let's expand over and look at some other times. So for example here, right, we have order blocks that sort of appeared right here. And then it used it almost like as just support for a little bit later. And then it did not sort of break through. Order blocks here just kind of took off and uh, kept going. 
This is fantastic. Love order blocks. I think this is one of my favorite things absolutely of all time here is just the order blocks. It hits the order blocks. You get the orders in here and it just takes off. So it's kind of nice to have a little bit of an alert here sometimes that we are going to uh, do some breakouts. It's not always that case, but many times it'll just go through the order blocks and take off. So, so I've learned that the order blocks is one of my absolute favorite features here. I absolutely love that. So let's look at, uh, there's something still going on. All right, let's look at pattern detection. Pattern detection is a little alert that comes up over here that'll tell you, hey, we got head and shoulders, we got double bottom, double top, uh, and you can set, so I guess, a sensitivity over here for that. That, uh, I didn't really, I ended up just turning that off. I didn't really like that. Uh, predictive uh, support and resistance. Ranges, channels, and exponentials. Channels was amazing. Channels is absolutely amazing as far as what it does. It just sort of tells you, hey, these are sort of the channels that we're using here. Um, let's just look at where it's more volatile. There we go. These are the channels. It'll predict this in advance, and I think it's dead on. There, there are some creepy times where we'd I'd actually have a pullback, and it would pull back to one of these lines. I was like, oh, God, that is so cool. It would actually pull back to a line, um, and I thought that was amazing. So, yeah, as you're sort of going into the extremes, it'll kind of guess. It'll take a guess of it. Hey, we may be coming down to here. We may be bouncing off these lines. I thought it was excellent. You do have a couple of different uh, features that you can use here, different settings. Uh, you have channels. You have ranges. Ranges were good. Although, um, I could just use pivot points for this. Uh, again, I can use the, uh, the, the, there's many, many other indicators that will help you out. One is called uh, HTF liquidity levels. And uh, that's what you saw previously, where it'll just uh, tell you where the liquidity is, like right here in this line, like this over here. And you can draw some, uh, you can draw some rectangles at the liquidity levels. And again, let me, let me uh, save this. Let me show you again what I'm talking about on uh, this particular one. So this, these are liquidity levels here. I know that's a lot. Let me, uh, let me, let me turn off some of this stuff. Let me turn off divergence. That's a lot. Uh, okay. But yeah, liquidity levels over here. Uh, these were drawn out in advance. And you can see just how rock solid they are. I mean, just bounce straight off of these. Obviously, like, you can use book map instead. And that's kind of where I'm going here. HTF liquidity is going to be your, your best friend once you jack up the, the, the opacity of this thing. You draw out your uh, rectangles and uh, just use that for the rest of the day. I think that is an excellent, and I mean an excellent alternative if you don't want uh, these kind of uh, levels here. But uh, I just, I think that the levels pre-drawn were excellent. I think this is one of the mainstays here. Really liked it. I thought it was top-notch uh, feature on this. The other thing that you can have here is the trend lines, and that is rock solid. The trend lines are rock solid, uh, as you can not see here. But um, if, if you go back in time, if you go back in time, this is kind of a bad representation, but um, the trend levels, uh, this is underwhelming, but trust me, trust me, uh, the trend levels were outstanding. Um, this is one of my main features that I really like too, the auto trend levels. Of course, it's going to be lame when I show it, but, but in real time, it's, it's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. It, obviously, you can draw your own trend lines. Uh, you can draw much better than that. So, uh, but if you're looking for just lazy trend lines, what have you, then that's going to be it. Uh, one of the things I really liked also were the swing structures and the liquidity sweep. So swing structures kind of tell you higher, high, higher, low on here. So we, we do have it sort of swinging in a particular direction. I think that uh, these are great. These are great. So higher high, higher low tells you sort of a little bit of a profile on here. And uh, you also have liquidity sweeps. We sort of tell you that we're sort of green. We're trending green over here. And uh, we're going to use this to bounce off of a little bit. I really found this to be exceptionally useful. I really like the liquidity sweeps, right? We have a lot of liquidity here. So we're going down. And again, we have liquidity green over here. I thought these two features were amazing. Um, but overall, I think that the uh, support resistance is kind of my main thing because of the order blocks, because of liquidity sweeps. 
because of the um, predictive ranges on here. If you just turn these three things on and you don't use anything else out of the out of the thing, this is this is your best buddy right here, right? Obviously, when you're when you're consolidating, it's not as useful, but uh, man, this is just sort of rock, rock solid. I like this better than the premium, the add-in, right? I like this better than the premium add-in, in my opinion. Uh, if you buy it for one thing, the uh, pattern detection is great. Now let's look at the last thing over here, which is going to be the, um, which is going to be their oscillator. The oscillator comes in a couple of different flavors. Um, this one is called advanced, and that's kind of the one that I would be leaning towards. Uh, the advanced gives you a level of overbought over sold it also gives you a um, um, it, it's called it's called institutional activity so like right here a lot of institutional activity right here a lot of institutional activity kind of has a little bit of a MACD histogram going on over here but also has buy sell indicators as well as divergences now I, I mean if you're going to get divergences I would end up just getting divergence for many indicators version 4 uh, it's going to be a lot better in my opinion for getting divergences uh, so you can you can adjust that to be a lot better looking than that but that's yeah, a little bit intimidating so you can uh, you know turn Turn off and turn on things. Most of the time on the divergence for many indicators, I'll do regular and hidden divergences. I'll do a, um, a first letter only. And I'll just say turn off the lines. And I'll, uh, normally I'll just uncheck everything except the MACD, MACD histogram, RSI. Maybe stochastic if I'm in the mood. Uh, and just turn that on. And that's going to give you, in my opinion, a really good divert. Because you can see here. I mean, look at how accurate that thing is. So you can see divergence from your indicators is rock solid. And that just looks good if you're looking for just divergence. I want something free. I don't want to pay for the oscillator. I mean, this is going to be your best buddy there, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I really think that uh, that's going to be a little bit better, in my opinion, uh, as far as divergences go, if you're looking for that. Um, but, yeah, I think the oscillator is pretty cool. Now, they do have a, a bunch of different settings in the oscillator, one of which is going to be, uh, let's see, you have the advanced, you have the ultimate RSI. So if you're just looking for an RSI, again, it's, it's nice that I can switch this up and not have to have multiple oscillators down here. So that is a great feature. I can switch this up. Uh, I don't know what's ultimate about the ultimate RSI. I don't know what's ultimate about the ultimate MACD. Uh, it looks pretty standard to me. Hey, that rhymes. Uh, you do have a stochastic. I mean, if you just want just a standard stochastic, you'd have levels of this over here. I, I think, in my opinion... Uh, there's a lot of other oscillators that you can use. I do like the Chart Prime oscillator the best out of any oscillator I've ever used. Uh, this is the Chart Prime. Again, this is a paid for. I paid for the Chart Prime. Uh, but it does tell you overbought, oversold. I think it's kind of nice. It does have divergences here as well. And it has sort of a little uh, tick marks. And, of course, a wave oscillator, a little indicators that say buy, sell, what have you. Uh, but I, th I think this is just one of my favorite oscillators of all time. And uh, it, it does not allow you to switch oscillators like the, uh, like the uh, Lux Algo does. But I just like this a little bit better. Let me undo here, go back to where we were. And, uh, yeah, I mean... It's not a bad oscillator, and I do like the fact that we can the fact that we can switch it up and make it into different ones. So I like that. I like to be able to go and say, look, you know, kind of the move for the MACD today. I think we're on a MACD kind of timeline, and uh, you can't change the settings. It'll keep the settings between the oscillators. So overall, um, there are freebies available for almost every feature in here that do well. That do well. The the uh, Lux Algo, however, um, is one thing. In other words, I got one add-in here. I got one add-in here. And so I only have two add-ins. If I want to replace this with seven, eight other add-ins, then I'm going to have to pay the price, right? You have to upgrade your... Uh, have to upgrade your subscription over here to TradingView, what have you. Maybe you have the ultimate subscription. I don't know. But I think that's one of the cool things that I like about it is that I can get all of this in one package. Um, would I you pay for this again after my subscription is up? Chances are no. Chances are no. Uh, what am I going to miss? Here's the thing. What am I going to miss from this add-in 
uh, if I were to never pay for it again. Order blocks is going to be my buddy, right? I mean, can I open book map and see the same thing? Yeah. Um, but Lux, Lux Algo is going to be a little bit cheaper, right? I mean, you look at a book map, you're 37 plus another 37, what have you. If you want the the uh, the Global Plus, going to be a lot more. Um, but, but yeah, I really think the candle coloring is excellent. I think the order blocks is excellent. I think the pattern detection is excellent. I I could do without the oscillator, uh, to be honest, right? I, I, I really could just do completely without this oscillator. I can't think I would ever, ever in my lifetime miss it. Uh, I would miss my chart prime oscillator. I think the chart prime is just a better oscillator, in my opinion, of course. Uh, would I miss the buy-sell signals? No, I mean, I can, I can sort of get that the same thing or similar with other add-ins, right? I mean, extreme trend is, is my buddy. Extreme trend just works. Divergences, would I miss that? No, I can use other divergences. Liquidity settings, I can use HTF liquidity. But again, I mean, how many of these things are you going to enable? Bollinger Bands, maybe. Uh, how many things are you going to enable? And how many other spots do you need to take inside of trading view when you could just get Lux Algo. So that's my kind of opinion. Would I pay for it again? Once my three months is up, I would not. But that is just my personal opinion. Uh, chart Prime, however, I would. I think the Chart Prime has a lot of features that Lux doesn't that I would really miss if I were to not have that. Again, this is just my opinion. Just a random fat man on the internet. So uh, take it as it is. And uh, that is my review of Lex Algo. Overall, I really, really, really like it. But I will not be paying for it again. Uh, I'll just replace it with freebies. And that's just my opinion.